What happened to yesterday? <laughs> 23rd of January. But now what? <clears throat> it's a, a memory. And there'll never be ever again another 23rd of January 1989. That whole... Has, has, that's a perception, isn't it? It's a memory. But we can't ever <coughs> duplicate that memory, can we? Because just the perception alone in time means that it's gone forever. <coughs> in our particular perceptual realm, Memory is like that, isn't it? Actually, January 23rd, 1989 is, is, is a, just a thought in the mind, something we create, isn't it? Yesterday didn't go around saying, I'm January 23rd, 1989, did it? I didn't hear any, anything yesterday <coughs> coming around and tapping me on the shoulder and saying, hey, tomato, I'm January 23rd, 1989. But there was me saying, you, today is January 23rd, 1989. Today is January 24th, 1989. I have uh, calendars, very nice, they produce calendars to, from Thailand that ties their, into the most beautiful uh, graphics these days. Their calendars used to be pretty cheap looking, in a little bit of newsprint. But then, now they're producing works of art mm. announcing the days each day of each month beautifully printed said, today is January 24th, 1989 so memory uh, perception being able to to name things a sanya sanya kanda having <coughs> having, uh, having symbols and words and language. And then when we, when we don't question or investigate that, then we, we, that's the world that we live in, is a world of perceptions, of me as a person, me as a certain type of person, you as a certain type of person, the world is a perception, <clears throat> the world of, of what, what I perceive the world to be, my, the whole conditioning process that goes into into one's uh, experiences from birth and being born into the family and the class and the race and the age, the time, the, <clears throat> the education, all the things that are conditioned into the mind, the sanya, perception, the names we give things, the views we have, these are all impermanent. And they're not self, and yet that ignorance grasps these things as being more than what they are. Not that they're wrong or bad, but it, it's it's that avicca, vajraya sankara, those all those tendencies to regard that as 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 a reality and make assumptions and and decisions and and hold views and form opinions from that whole realm of ignorance that's never been questioned maybe, never been penetrated with wisdom. Mm. That's what prejudices are, aren't they? If you, if you hear people have prejudice, racial prejudices or whatever, it's because they hear, uh, or maybe from their parents from the very beginning, that that race or that nation is bad. So then, then that very much affects your world view, doesn't it? How you, how you react to things. That's why the, the, the Buddha refrained from making doctrines about God and, and metaphysical uh, statements, speculations. Because that tends to be those are perceptions, just like anything. God, the word God, is a perception, isn't it? It is. 
it is a man-made word. It is uh, a creation of the mind, the word itself. <coughs> and yet we can say God and people will start feeling all kinds of emotions. Some people that believe in God, they'll start feeling uh, very... Uh, Wonderful, oh God loves me, God is wonderful, God is the Almighty, God is the Saviour, God is this, God is that. If you believe there isn't any God or you don't believe in God, then you say God, and then you say, oh God, there isn't any God, it's all just hocus pocus superstition, stupidity. Those are the emotional reactions, that's emotion, isn't it? that uh, one goes toward the the uh, affirmative and the other to the negative. <clears throat> That's why the Four Noble Truths and the Patita Samapada is an investigation of the process, the, the process of Dhamma, rather than, than, gra- than giving us positions to take or views to grasp onto. Or hold on to it. It's an investigation of the process that we can actually witness to in the in the form and in the karma, the conditions that we have at this time. So it's not a it's not an affir- affirmation or a denial, but an but a an investigation, putting into looking and and. and Penetrating. It's a penetration, isn't it? This is like contemplating the aramana, the sticky objects. Like the word God can be a sticky object, can't it? Your mind gets stuck on it. <coughs> as soon as there's a God and then, and then you go into, oh, God is wonderful, God is the Almighty, I love God, God is my Father, God is my... That, you're stuck... And that's, that's what we mean by stickiness. Because you're, you, as you grasp that concept of God, then your mind goes uh, into this proliferating tendency, say, uh, affirming it. Or if, if you, if you don't believe in God and you hate the whole idea, then you say God and then it gets stuck on, oh, it's all poppycock, it's silly, foolish superstition, bah humbug. And that's, that's sticky, and you're stuck onto, onto the aramana, because you're proliferating. Just some, some word, you press the button, God, and then, then you, you become something like that, don't you? You can press your buttons and, and see what you're stuck on. That's what we're doing in meditation, isn't it? We're, we're just watching where we stick, where we get stuck in, in this world. What tends to just take us over or obsess our mind? What tends to, to uh, say, make us angry or resentful or bitter? What tends to inspire us? What, what we long for and be inspir- in, have inspiration and things affirmed for us? Like when I say the things that you like to hear, you know, let's say, you're, you know, you're all very mature, evolving spiritual beings now. You're perfectly capable of practicing and motivating yourself into the spiritual path. You don't need uh, me to constantly kind of be on your back, pushing you along the way. Because all of you, every one of you, all the bhikkhus here, the siladars, the nagarikas, everyone is, 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 uh, is, is realized the baramita and the keeping the sila and your lives now are really moving toward that ultimate spiritual realization. Mm. And then, then the, the, because that's, that's nice, that's praise, isn't it? That's encouragement, that's inspiring. It's nice to hear that somebody you look to as, as some kind of authority or expert uh, says you're all right. Saying you're all right. Get on with it. 
And then if I suddenly just uh, say the opposite. <laughs> you don't like to hear that, how, you know, criticisms, the, the things I see wrong, your weaknesses. What if I, what if I expose you each in, individually, your weaknesses in this meeting? <laughs> to everyone. Just started going through the whole line and just telling everyone about this person's faults and weaknesses. Would be. Wouldn't like that, would you? <laughs> and press your buttons and you get stuck on the aromanos. Now that which is not an aramana, what is that? Well, that that's where you question that. Well, what what is what where what is not aramana? What is not ob- an object? Where don't you get? St- what is not sticky? That is that is the question to to investigate, isn't it? What is, where is it, or what is it? Now we have to admit that each one of us is in this very subjective position, isn't it? Because you're, even to my eyes, you're just a Ramanas. That's all you are. I get stuck onto your the looking at you. And, and then, then even your names and the memories I have of you, the, the views and opinions I might hold about you, they're not, they're not really, uh, if they're, they're just uh, a Ramana, aren't they? That's all they are. There's not, that's not a real, that's not a, that has no center, no core to it at all. My, my opinion of you has no core to it. I can't find any core in it. Anything, any, anything that one can say is what you really are or what your soul is or anything like that. Or any opinion or memory, perception I have of you or any of you or all of you. What is it? It's just, just a Nama Rupa, Vajaya Salayatana, Well, that process. It's a process, isn't it? <clears throat> but then we're not going into abstractions either by, by giving doctrinal positions saying that there's no self as a, as a kind of doctrine Anatta is not meant to be a, a, a doc, doctrine or dogma that one grasps. It's a, it's a tool for investigation. So then, the, then the, the, we, when you see what a Ramana really is, what, what it is, the, the, the uh, Vijnana, Bhajaya uh, Nama Rupa, Nama Rupa Bhajaya Salayatana, Salayatana Bhajaya uh, Pasa Pasa Bhajaya Vedana And so this this experience of being born in a conscious form is like this we for the for our whole lives it'll be like this I'll be the subject of this world of this experience from birth to death Always have been and always will be till they, till they, till I die. But then what is the true subject? Is it, is it the perceptions that are con- conditioned into my mind about me? Is it my name? Is that my true self? That was given to me years after I was born. And I hope it's not the name my mother gave me. I hope that's not really me. And I hope, <laughs> and I hope the the uh, culture 
and background of my life is not really me. I hope I'd hate that to be kind of permanent and eternal. And I'd hate to, I mean, to really be, you know, pretty miserable to, to have for eternity uh, a personality. To have a personality and a, and then all this Vedana and feeling and, and all this attachments to a Ramana and things like this, to have that for eternity, forever. You think about that, that would be be horrible. And all those things, when you when you penetrate them with wisdom, with Panya, then what are they? They're they're insubstantial, evanescent, ephemeral, forever changing. Ineluctable operation. So that there's no there's no core to any of it to the Ramanas there there's no there's no eternal core or true center. So as long as you're looking for the core or the center or the ultimate truth or the deathless as a Ramana, what are you going to get? Something that isn't. isn't it? That's why even even the even the word or the perception has to be let, re- relinquished. Like the word God has to be relinquished. And all the, the other, all the other uh, beliefs and all the aramanas of your, of your mind you, you begin to just see as, as for what they are. Because the, none of them, they're all unsatisfactory because they're, they have no core, no real center. But where is the center? And, and so now we're, we're, we're say, as we, as we let go of the Aramana, then what is it, the knowing and the, and the, that can witness and know without giving it a name because then that's Aramana, without having to perceive it as anything. Do you really have to be somebody to feel happy? Or do you have to have somebody verify that you are somebody or that there is a God or that there is eternal life or there is something? Because then you're, then you're, you're, you're wanting affirmations to support your fears. You're still caught in, in doubt and in fear, anxiety, uncertainty and you want the, an authority to come along and say, yes, there is a God, yes, you'll go to heaven, yes, there is the deathless realm, and, and, uh, so forth, and you will, and you have an eternal soul, and, and when you die, if you, if you are a good person, you'll live happily ever after, and in a happy state, and so forth. And that is the, the desire, to be to have to feel safe and secure. I mean, it's kind of basic, very immature. I mean, we have to when we're young, and we need that kind of affirmation from our parents. We need parents to say, "I love you. You're all right, and I'll protect you." Because children need need it. We needed that <coughs> up to a certain age. I mean, children physically need it. They need parents who will <coughs> nourish them and protect them. Because they they can't do it themselves. They can't possibly do that on their own. So we need external parents. But for the holy life, this is the, the rising to that ultimate freedom. That's why this isn't a a path of, of, of continuous affirmation. We, we use inspiration and encouragement, but, but the encouragement is also towards this investigation for you to awaken, to be awake and, and, 
and use wisdom to investigate. Some of you refuse to do it. It's not because you're not encouraged to. It's some think you do it when you don't. Because you come out with some pretty silly ideas. And whatever it is, you keep going, and you don't, you don't, I mean, it's alright to come up with silly ideas as long as you begin to see them for what they are. The mindfulness then is the way to the death. Upamado wa makapadang. Very kind of rhythmic, isn't it? Poetic. Upamado wa makapadang. Heedfulness, being mindful, is the way to the deathless. And so there's this, this uh, because this is the true subject, the, the pure, the purity, the pure mind, the mind that is not, that, that, that is not a condition, not an aramana, not a mental state. And that's when you're mindful, when you're not stuck on aramana, when you're not sticking on anything, that then that is a mata padang. That is the deathless. We say that the empty mind. Or well, some people, well, uh, empty is a word. Is a word they get stuck on. Mm-hmm. Empty means nothing. So then they have to say. It's not deathless even sometimes is a bit too strong. Like my book, Path to the Deathless, they had to kind of pretty it up a bit, say mindfulness, Path to the Death. Because death, anything with death in it is, is considered, uh, is, a, is, a, is an aramana that people get stuck on. I thought deathless was a very nice term. The path, the road to death, might might be a bit heavy, but <laughs> but some people are so blind that just the word death, even if even if they can't see less after, they just see death. <laughs> Remember at Ajahn Kitty Sarah's Katina, I gave the talk or something, and afterwards, a uh, young lady came up to me, gave a talk, and I thought I was explaining very well the kind of service and help for humanity, and, and uh, you know, all the kind of altruistic things I was trying to get across. And this young lady came up to me and, and said, you shouldn't be teaching like that. And I said, what? <laughs> You're saying we shouldn't do anything, that if everything's all right, and there's so many things wrong with the world, we've got to... <laughs> <laughs> so obviously she only heard maybe a, a sentence or, uh, that, that was a very powerful, she got stuck on it and couldn't hear the rest of what I was saying. <clears throat> So the, the, you just heard one sentence stuck onto that, and then the rest was totally didn't hear the rest. We do that a lot, don't we? We're all guilty of that. <clears throat> then the then the simple teaching: do good, refrain from doing evil. The very basic, isn't it? To just in daily life with a body with these with these condition in this conditioned realm with a human body then we it's conscious and feels our intention is to do good and refrain from doing evil purify them the mind this is the teaching of the Buddha very simple isn't it 
Ja, in the, the, uh, the Manovinyana consciousness in Tamarom, Tamaramana, so seeing the, the Dhamma and being mindful, and we, with our ability to think and, and to perceive and conceive, then we're using this from from a from from vicha, from knowledge, rather than from ignorance, from avicha. Everything's dhamma, even ignorance is dhamma. And and so that that uh, that we see ignorant thoughts and views and attachments as dhamma, rather than as self. We're seeing that 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 uh, selfishness in all its forms and fears and desires and that which arises and ceases. It's the tamaramana. It's the it's what it's the way things are. So even your most uh, horrible thoughts and and uh, feelings are tamaramana. And so we can we, we, we see it as anicca dukkha anatta rather than getting stuck onto it with like or dislike. And that takes a, a, a determination because if if you really like something or really dislike something, it's hard to to let it go. There's always a, a, a stickiness. To it. Anything really attractive, anything really unattractive or horrible, there's one is stickiness of of uh, drawing it near, trying to bring it, hold on to it. The other is a stickiness trying to get rid of it, getting stuck by trying to push it away. <laughs> the other indulgence and suppression, gamma sukulitana yoka atakilamatana yoka. And then in, in the, the Salayatana, the, the, like the Aramana for the eye is the, is the, is the uh, objects, the, the object of the eye. Eye conscious of Jakku, the Jakku Vinyana, then the Ramana is what you see, the object. The Ramana for the nose is the odor, and the, for the ear is sound, and for the tongue is taste, for the body is is feeling of pleasure and pain, heat and cold. For the uh, for the mano vinyana, it's the it's the the thoughts, the feelings. The perceptions. <clears throat> They're like this looking at this cup, say this that's the uh, the, the rupa is that uh, the form is seen with the eye. That's the object of the of the sight. Now this cup, but actually the cup, the word cup is is uh, is a perception I'm creating. Actually, the eye consciousness is here, but then the mano minyana puts a name onto it. Cup. And so forth. And then this is this is a, an investigation of the process. This doesn't say I'm a cop, does it? We say you're a cop. It's like this carpet on the floor, remember? People kept wanting to throw it out. I mean, a bratty old carpet. We should have a beautiful carpet here where in the kind of this important place in the sala. Ajahn Prabhakar, I thought, we want that ratty old carpet there. So then I told everybody, when went, ratty old carpet, you know, that's a work of art. That is a 
That is woven silk, probably from Armenia. That is a genuine work of art. It's probably creation of, of little children who spend hours ruining their eyesight, reading silk threads into subtle patterns and lovely, lovely uh, pastel shades of blue and pink. The perception changes, doesn't it? <laughs> because if you just look at the carpet, you see that, that it's worn, it's old, it, it has, uh, it's frayed, and then that's all. You, that's all some people see: and then an old carpet with, with worn and frayed. And so they think, ratty old carpet. Other people see, uh, like the, the patterns on it, or the, realize that it's a uh, um, um, woven, hand-woven carpet, and it, and it was uh, probably one time very, very beautiful. So forth. So... <laughs> But these are reflections, aren't they? And some people like old carpet. Some people would prefer this one, don't they? Some people like this one because it's new. Other people don't like this one because it is new. <laughs> some people collect old carpets like that. Wealthy people spend lots of money buying them up. <coughs> Because what? It, it's a it's a perception, isn't it? It is what it is. Isn't it? That, that carpet isn't saying anything. It's just exactly what it is right now. And and we put onto it all kinds of things. We project onto it uh, all all kinds of values, opinions. <clears throat> That's what we do with each other, isn't it? We, we, we have personalities become the, we, we, we hold on to a, a view of a personality. Just our views of nation and of what the French are like, what the Italians are like, what the Germans are like, what the Americans are like. These are all perceptions. Like in America, you have different national perceptions. You, you regard French people very differently in America than you do here in England. <laughs> Americans have a very different perceptions of France than the than British do. Because it, they are, you know, it isn't so close. <laughs> <laughs> But in, uh, say, you probably, the British probably have very different perceptions of Mexico than the Americans, than the North Americans. What's close, what affects you, what, what, uh, what is, you know, your closest neighbors and that which you have a long history with, you have a strong perception for. Some, some country that has absolutely never been any threat or any bother to you whatsoever, <clears throat> in contrast to a country that, that has been. <clears throat> so these are prejudices, prejudgments that we make, and they can be very cultural, very, uh, you know, the whole nation can, can hold to a certain type of prejudice, national prejudice. It's what a lot of culture really is about, isn't it? What a lot of uh, European culture is, is just a smug, uh, inversion on our own ways as being somehow better than the others. And we call that culture. <laughs> so that, that, that is, uh, is a, uh, that, because that is the grasping and it's getting stuck on the aramanas. All of that.
the sticky world that we create. And that world is a is conditioned world. It's it's all an illusory world. It's a phantom, like like the idea of, of it's a dream world. It's a dream, isn't it? It's not real. It's a illusory world. So then as we contemplate and free ourselves from these illusions, then we wake, awaken from the dream of life. Think of it like that. That's what the the enlightenment is, isn't it? To be, to awaken from the dream of life from all the dreams, all the illusions that we get lost into, we become caught, stuck onto these, these dream, this dream realm, this illusory realm. Mm. Have you ever asked yourself when you dream at night, when you're dreaming, that's real, isn't it? When you're actually dreaming, it seems it's, 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 it seems as real as the dreams that we dream when we're awake, aren't they? Except maybe you don't awaken from the dreams that when you're awake, because you think you're awake. But you do when you wake from sleep and you've been dreaming. If maybe you've had a horrible dream and you awaken, oh, it's only a dream. <laughs> what a relief! And that's that's uh, like the realization of nibbana is when you awaken from the dream of life. And, what a relief! It's only a dream. And all this self and me and mine and this whole realm, this world, this aramana, all the the illusions, the phantoms I created and believed in, and now I've awakened from that from that dream. And then that is, that's why the Buddha is the, the awakened one, the awake, the, the wake, that which is awake. <clears throat> so, you see, most humanity is, is still dreaming, isn't it? It's a dream world, astral world of phantoms and shadows and dreams and, and attachments. It's an astral mentality, isn't it, that most humanity is still caught into, stuck into, is that plane of, of dream, dream, dream life, illusion. So that they, this, uh, it's, 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 uh, quite a leap to, to leap out of that, that phantom realm, that illusory realm, that dream world. And all that, that world that we've created and we've, we've created out of ignorance has been instilled into us through the ignorance of our families and cultures. That's a, that's a, an astral world. It's an illusory world of phantoms and shadows feelings and emotions based on ignorance and self and separation and fear and desire, you know, then enlightenment is to awaken from that realm. So contemplate this, reflect on this in your practice. To these images I present are for reflection. And to, to, to present Dhamma in different ways that might strike a note or help you to, to contemplate Dhamma more. See, the, the pleasure of it, it's, 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 it's something that is really wonderful to do. We all love to talk and have dumber discussions and 
reflect and talk about Nama. I'm able to talk and, and contemplate our experiences of life. 